Shonda Hanley was taken at gunpoint from her suburban Louisiana home in broad daylight. The brazen kidnapping was not a random attack, though. It was a cold and calculated plan targeting her. CBS News correspondent David Begno spoke to the victim, who is alive today, and it's in thanks to one off-duty sheriff's deputy's gut feeling. Around 2.30 in the afternoon on August 6, 2017, Shonda Hanley was at her home in Lafayette, Louisiana with her daughter Isabella when the doorbell rang. I went to the door and it's these two men. The two men posing as delivery guys forced themselves in with guns. They started to scream to get the F on the floor and don't move. They handcuffed me in front like this. Isabella, upstairs at the time, rushed to see what was going on. I was just stunned. The two men took Shonda, threw her in the back of a white van, and drove off. Prosecutors Kenny Abair and Donald Kinnett. These guys are heading out of town with Shonda Hanley in the back of that van. How often do residential kidnappings happen here? Very rare. Yeah, not very often at all. Not long after, Sheriff's Deputy Chad Martin clocked out of work and headed home. He was unaware of Shonda's kidnapping 60 miles away. As I was traveling, there was a wreck on the interstate. I got stopped behind a white van. I could kind of see the, the driver of the van was starting to get nervous. In the mirror, he was looking at me. He decided to get into the shoulder and speed off. Well, it didn't sit right with me, so I got in behind him. I put my emergency lights, sirens on. Martin followed the van as the driver exited the interstate, turned down a dirt road, and then got stuck in the mud. Two men jumped out and took off running. When you approach the van, you've got your gun drawn? Yes, sir. I opened the rear door of the van, and in the van, what I thought was a mannequin moved. It scared me, startled me, so I jumped back and I shut the door. I said, oh my God, things aren't always what they seem. Mm, I think that's the truth. Mm -hmm. David Begno is here in Studio 57 with us to talk a little bit more about this case. There's always like a hook at the end yeah. that you're like, I need more. So the more that I need is, Who's responsible for the kidnapping? <laughs> Who did this? Well, so the estranged husband is in prison, Michael Hanley. Mm. But Michael Hanley ended up in some really foolish ways, hiring two guys to carry this out. Mm. And so you have two brothers who were sent to this woman's home, showed up as delivery drivers, and she's like, no, didn't order anything. They forced their way in, in front of her friend and with her daughter upstairs. They kidnap her, handcuff her, put her in the back of a van, start driving. They get to where they get stuck in the mud. They get out of the vehicle. They mm -hmm. run and they jump in the intercoastal waterway and they drown. So these guys weren't pros at this, I guess? To put it lightly. Yeah. They drowned within like maybe 10 minutes. Mm. Meanwhile, the cops are radioing back to Shauna Hanley's hometown, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And the woman who had been trying to get police to believe her for months, that her ex-husband was victimizing her, and the cops didn't really believe her, finally was able to say, well, it's true. So the same cops who had known about her are the cops who get the phone call like, Shonda Hanley's naked 60 miles from here. Uh, she's been given four pills, bound and gagged, and a guy on his way home just found her. Had it not been for that sheriff's deputy. Mm -hmm. And his gut reaction. I'm here to tell you Shonda Hanley would be six feet below the dirt. Mm. Given all of that, the defense has argued that her estranged husband was not guilty. So what is their version of all of this? What are they saying? How could he get out of this? Listen, Michael Hanley, if you got to give one thing to him, it's that the guy can tell a story almost better than a storyteller, mm. okay? They had some addiction centers in Acadiana where I grew up. He was well-known, kind of flashed into town, was a guy around town who was able to make things happen for people. They became millionaires, not overnight, but pretty quickly. They were doing well. Relationships started to fall apart. Bottom line is the defense initially tried to say, and this was fascinating, I asked the defense attorney, did you ever ask Michael Hanley if he did it? And he goes, no. I said, you didn't ask him? And he said, no. no is that I just, standard? I did. It is, apparently. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Innocent what they... until proven otherwise, What right? they tried to say in court is that Michael Hanley essentially um, was just trying to get his wife back. He was just going through all these motions to try and make a case to get her back. Uh, and he, he don't know how, you know, some guys got some handcuffs and showed up at the house and did what they did. Did he did. try flowers, perhaps? Well, uh, rather than kidnapping you know, the old-fashioned way? <laughs> so guess what? You know how they knew that, that Michael Hanley bought the handcuffs that were used in the kidnapping? 
because the guy showed up at the store and the cameras recorded him going in to buy them. So that's what I was going to ask you, because we have seen cases like this before, whether it's kidnapping for hire or something worse. And usually what happens is the guys who are responsible for the actual are act. Are not bright. And they flip mm -hmm. on the person who hired them. Well, here's but the in this case, these guys didn't survive. Because they're dead. So, so they have to make the connection. Well, as soon as they find Shonda, they start going, hey, where's Michael? Well, guess what? A picture pops up of Michael Hanley bound. Bloody. He looks like he's been victimized. Are the same people who are after Shonda, after Michael? Hmm. Well, don't, oh, then don't it tell unravels. us too much. What's the answer? Don't tell us well, too much. <laughs> then it unravels. Anyway, wait until you see the story on Saturday night and you find out what happened when Shonda Hanley went to their hunting camp in Mississippi and she was cleaning it out and she found an Arlo camera. Now, I have an Arlo in my house. It's a security camera, right? Mm. Okay. So she starts looking through the Arlo camera. Well, Arlo kicks on every time somebody starts talking. And it and captured a Michael lot of stuff. Michael Hanley did some talking. So before that, it was a mystery? Uh, no, because before Shauna got kidnapped, Michael was doing some crazy things, breaking into her home, holding her up mm. against a wall, doing some very abusive things. But the cops thought, oh, sounds like a domestic thing. I mean, the, she just felt like the cops weren't taking her seriously. And mm. where I grew up in Acadiana, women don't get abducted from their home in broad daylight and put mm -hmm. in the back of a van. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't happen. And quite frankly, anywhere in America, it would mm -hmm. be like a, wait, what? Mm -hmm. You know? Well, and, and you spoke with her. Yeah, first time she sat down and done a television interview mm -hmm. like this. And yeah. the fact that she was able to survive this, really off of this, this law enforcement officer who just had a feeling? She had not met him in person until we connected the two of them together at the scene. Wow. Oh, man. What was that like? She got very emotional, yeah. very emotional. And I think about life putting people in places where they should be. The cop grew up in New Hampshire, didn't know his biological father, moved to Louisiana to meet his biological dad who happened to be a cop and went to be a cop like him. And he was the one who was in the right place at the right time. That story on its own is great. Isn't it cool? Yes. But here's the lesson, if, if anything, other than if you like a crime story and you watch it, I, I hope you take this away. When your gut tells you something's not right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let somebody know. Mm -hmm. Because that deputy said, hmm, something ain't right. Why is this car pulling off in front of me and taking off? Mm -hmm. Now, remember, he was late for dinner. He could have gone home, didn't have to stop. Mm. And look what he ran upon. Good advice for life and 48 hours. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> uh, David Begnell, thank you very much. Pleasure.